forgot to do an intro to this video so you get daylight version all right so we got a call to go out to belmont forest um but they said that they had a couple other people attempt to come pull them out and nobody can figure out how to get to them All right, guys, so this was a situation. They were stuck right here where this red dot is, just about, on this logging trail. So this is not a road. This is just a trail in the woods. But because they were so close to these houses, they were sending, like, uh, I think it was this guy's house, this address, right? So we got this address. says they're stuck. And, you know, nobody could find them, so we head out. We come down this road. Yep, can't get to them. You can get, looks like there's a way to get up here to this trail and then come up right there. But this is like a camp. You can't get to it. There's another entrance, I think, through the woods right here. That's fenced off. So we couldn't get in that way. So you come up here, and there's a trail that comes across right here. That's fenced off. says so private property. And then there was another way in a little bit higher up. I think it was like right here. There's a trail that goes back, but that's also private property. And then there was another one like right here. That one's also private property. So we could not get to this guy's location right here. Okay. All the way up over here. All the way up over here. We had to come all the way over here. And then we had to come. So we came in right here off of Sharon. Came all the way down. All the way across. This was fenced off. Couldn't get in here said road closed to vehicles and then we came to this one road closed to vehicles and then we came to this one road closed to vehicles and then we came i think it was this one all right so we came in from here we had to come all the way down come across all the way down all the way across to here and then go through the woods so we were right here like 200 yards from them it took an hour to go all the way around to go find them. Those were headlights. Those are flashlights. Yeah. Are these? How's it going? Well, it's going, <laughs> sir. So uh, I got back in there and it like dead ended. Mm -hmm. And when I was backing up, I think I got turned around and I ended up in the trees. walk over there and look at it real quick. Hey, we, we were, we were in, going, 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 and then it just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like you're just stuck on it. So you should be able to... Okay, I'll tell you it's pretty consistent. <laughs> if you can tell it's been dented. <laughs> I gotta replace the rocker panels anyway. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
That was the big bomb. <laughs> I was going to say, we were cruising along, cruising along, and it... <laughs> Give you a little whiplash. Just a little bit. got stuck going that way. So, I had to go to the high school for my son, drop off some Claritin, and we just got a call for a dually, four-wheel drive dually, stuck out at Pope Duval. Got stuck, backed up, got sideways, stuck in a ditch. So, we're going to go get him out. See you guys there. There she is, up there, about a half a mile. Didn't damage the truck at all. Some people ripped the front bumpers up a little bit. No, I felt it when it spin down. That was yeah. But we'll get you pulled right out. All right, guys. So uh, me and the boys, we were headed to the store. We just got a rescue out in Osceola Forest. We said uh, framed out forerunner, stuck in the mud, really good. So we made a U-turn. We're headed out. Turn right. So we're in the forest. Just give you an idea how far in the forest we have to go sometimes. 12 miles. And I've already been driving for about two miles. Definitely see some nice camera does not do it justice, but that is a pretty sky right there. Alrighty, we getting closer, getting closer, starting to see some mud and stuff. We see tail lights. Winch. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, cause I've been thinking about it for a while, and that was a pretty good reason to do it. Yeah, it looks like I'll just single line winch hook right up to it, and it'll come right out. So, uh, in terms of like getting out, cause uh, this road I think continued loops around, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure I want to try to drive it since I haven't been up there. Like, right. You think there's a way to turn it around, or? Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll get you where I'm at, and then we'll turn you around. Okay. That traction board stuck under there? Yeah, uh, everyone but one of them is. We tried to do all four wheels. Mm -hmm. I also uh, I had not aired down before this, so I aired down these two wheels because I couldn't get to them. So yeah. I, I don't know if you have a compressor, but I do. Yeah, uh, at some point. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you back here, turn around, and then Sweet. we'll make sure we get all your stuff picked up. Yeah, appreciate it. Yep, I mean, I'll start pulling. You put it in reverse. So, what I tell everybody is, you know, you can give it enough gas where it's trying to go. Just yeah. don't spin the tires. It's worse if you spin the tires. Yeah. And a lot of guys will, as soon as they move, they floor it. Yeah, and, no. and then they'll bury down faster and I can pull them out. But as long as you're applying a little bit of power, it rolls a lot easier. Okay.
You want to pick up your boards now before we pull you all the way up? Just so we don't have to carry these things all the way back. Yep, just a little bit bigger tires, you'll make it through there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you can tell where the frame of the car was sitting. You just bottomed out. Um, what do you need from me? I'll just put it back in reverse and I'll pull you out to where I'm at. Okay. And then we'll get you turned around. Sweet. Nice rig you got there. Uh, we're on yep. YouTube videos, yes. All right, they are officially out. We always escort them out of the woods, especially out here in Osceola where you have no cell phone service. We don't like to leave anybody stranded. So we'll follow them to where they're comfortable and where we feel it's comfortable to leave them. So. All right, I know you can't see me, but this is why you always escort your customers out of the woods. So he drove a couple miles and then pulled over and goes, uh, I don't remember how to get out of here. So now we're leaving him out. Uh, and remember, he was like 13 miles in the woods, so take care of your customers. This was a tribute ride that we're um, getting ready to do for two tow truck drivers that were hit and killed in the line of duty and no charges against the people that ran them over because Florida laws. <laughs> So we just got a call, 1.30 in the morning-ish. Lady said she's in wet grass across the street from her house. So we give her a quote and we head over there. Once we got on scene, there was police officers on scene and another record company. The record company says they're unable to get to her and points out towards a field and she's like quarter mile behind a pond across a wet field. So we get out there, the lady's been drinking, police won't let her anywhere near the car. So we had the wife jump in the car to steer it out. Um, so we didn't get a video of the whole job. More so like out the beaches or um, national forests. Gotcha. And stuff like that. <laughs> we get these little calls here and there. <laughs> save a life video um, on TikTok and Facebook and a whole bunch of people got mad off-road recovery here I'm gonna show you how to save a life don't do this pull this out put your strap in the hole and then put your pin in from the side there you go I just saved a life actually that's false information um, it's going all over TikTok right now. This is still not an acceptable situation because now the pin is no longer in a shear configuration and it is now in a bending configuration. There is a huge, huge difference. So how big of a difference is there between shear strength, which means cut, and bending strength? Here we did a demonstration with a piece of wood. So now we have a load cell on there, so we'll be able to see what we're pulling. We have a safety line, so when that breaks, this doesn't hit the Jeep. So with a piece of wood, 
being used as a pin in shear strength with a hitch installed, it broke at 2,950 pounds. Almost 3,000 pounds out of a piece of wood in shear strength. Now we have just a piece of wood in there acting hey, as the pin. Both sides. Can't say I'm cheating. 630 pounds. So 630 versus 3,000. Huge, huge difference. But I have encountered hundreds and hundreds of bent pins and broken pins. So I already know. I'm just doing this to show you guys that you're listening to bad advice and you're still going to get hurt. I don't even think I own regular pins. Everything I have is a Factor 55 pin. They're much, much better than a standard pin from like Tractor Supply or Harbor Freight. So they usually just have a bent piece on one side that keeps it from coming out and then the little pin on the other side. So what happens is the strap pulls on the dead center and it turns it into a V, okay? And then this little piece right here, that'll shear off. And then this side will come out. So now it's sticking out this way and the strap just flew off. I already did a bunch of videos showing straps can still be very dangerous and kill people. Damn! No good. The rope broke. All right, let's slow it down so you guys can see what's going on. This truck's going to take off. Now wait for it, wait for it. Look right about here. Do you see that? And then it smashes the truck. So when that pin slides out, it's going to be a quick release of this giant rubber band of death. And it went straight through the tailgate all the way through to the passenger seat. Tell me that's not dangerous. So don't tell me it's safe to have the strap flying at you. That's still bad information. And if you don't shear this off, now it's bent. And now you cannot get it out. So how much was your toe strap? Because now you're cutting it off to get it out. So you're throwing away money. When you could have just spent 30 bucks for the right piece of equipment on Amazon. I'm not even telling you to go buy the best. I'm just saying get the right stuff. So since, you know, I'm a hack and I use something weaker for safety reasons like I don't have the equipment to put 50,000 pounds of shear force on a hitch at my house to break a steel pin and then to bend one so I used a piece of wood to make it easier to show you guys the difference between shear strength and bending strength and everybody's all mad that I used a piece of wood to show that so I was going to make another video and use steel rods and then a buddy of mine tagged me in a bunch of his videos says, no, 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 I already did this in December. So I stole his videos and I'm going to show them to you showing the exact same result using steel rods. I'm there just taking up the load. Let's start putting some weight on it. And we'll look up there. There it's failed. 200, 155. See how it's failed if we back this back. So there's our pin failed at however many kilograms it was. Now very rarely, let's get back into the science of it, very rarely pins are actually designed to take force over a long area. Pins rely on sheer strength. So the strength is right there and right there. And if we're only putting force in that area there, all this that's unsupported has got no other option than to bend. Now, although this is way too big, and honestly, it needs to be smaller, but we don't have 10 mil pipe at the workshop. So we're going to put in a piece that's 15 mil ID with the eight millimeter pin, and we're gonna give that a tug and see what, we, see what the outcome is. Now, you'll notice that is an extremely snug fit, okay? Our first one failed at $1.55. That's in there, equal distances. Let's put some weight on it. That's 800 on a 750 come along. And our pin is still dead straight. So that simple little bushing in there has 
exceeded anything that I expected, to be quite honest. I thought that was going to blow apart. 900 kilograms, <laughs> 750 come along, oops. And we are still spot. Oh, there's a little bit of deformation there, but let's pull this apart and see what it's like. So we'll let the weight off it. So the weight's off. Look at that. There you go. Look at... There is a reason why recovery companies test their equipment and why only tested recovery equipment should be used to do recovery work. Okay, we do not go off feelings on this page. We do not go off of, oh, well, this guy said this, this guy said that kind of stuff. We go off of data and proof, okay? I don't care if your Uncle Joe has been pulling on a hitch pin for 40 years. I don't care if your Uncle Joe has been using a ball hitch for 40 years. It's improper equipment, and it should not be used. Use the right equipment or don't do it.